What's up guys, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you for tuning in. This is an important topic, so don't even think about changing the channel. If this is something that you think you're struggling with with your fish, stay tuned. We have in-depth information based on treating hundreds of thousands of fish, studies, research, the experience, all packed into this video for you guys to make a successful treatment that's not like any other information online. So what is Culminaris? This is an important one when it comes to the identification of the disease because there's something that looks very similar to it. So you have to identify it correctly to know if this is Culminaris. Culminaris is a dull sheen on the fish, a dull white sheen. If the white patch is fuzzy, it is not Culminaris. It is actually Saprolegina fungus mold, which is not the same as Culminaris bacteria. It's a mold that needs to be treated like a mold, and Culminaris is a bacteria that needs to be treated like a bacteria, and how they're contracted are two different ways where Saprolegina is more from excess mold buildup in the aquarium, and Culminaris is stress related which then weakens the immunity and allowing the fish to contract the disease. Common stressors that allows a fish to contract the Culminaris infection is bullying between aggressive fish, intense flow, intense lighting, poor diet, and number one is poor water quality, as in poor electrolyte ion minerals in the water. I'm not just talking about the regular water changes, saying that you do your water changes, you're good to go. What's been proven best to keep the immunity boosted best long term, even when stressors are present, especially oxidative stressors, acid buildup stressors in the aquarium, is having a constant supply of these electrolyte ion minerals in the tank. And I say constant. Because even if you're doing regular water changes, we've done the studies, we've done the research, we've done the experiments. Long-term experience has shown that keeping a constant dose of these electrolyte GH minerals is what proved to be the number one thing to help a fish not contract this disease. I mean, when we're patients and we go to the doctor and we're really sick, what's the first thing a doctor gives that person? What do they give us? They give us electrolyte. IV, right? In third world countries when there's real sick people, they don't just start jumping in and giving them medication. No, they treat with electrolytes first. Same with fish. We need this constant supply. So if we don't have this electrolyte ion minerals present in the aquarium, really, even if a treatment is successful, chances are the fish is going to have the issue again. I have a few other videos that go over this topic of dosing constantly, that's an important way, electrolyte ion reducing minerals. Check the description below and the articles for much more information and I'll say it, it, this is science and it's been scientifically proven that this is what is needed. Okay, so assuming that you don't have any stressors and these things are in check, then you can consider a treatment. So here's your four steps on how to treat Culminaris. Number one, and again I'm repeating it because it's so important, lower the stressors and improve water quality. If you don't know how to do this, please take a look at the resources below. Failure to do this step, guys, is like giving burn medication to a burn victim while they're still on fire. Number two, add additional sodium chloride to the aquarium. This can be done to one tablespoon per five gallon. This is a therapeutic amount of salt to help the treatment be more successful. There is a full salt treatment that can be done where you don't consider other medications, which I'll describe later towards the end of the video. There has been proven studies to show that salt can cure Culminaris. Number three, give the fish a medicated swab. Bring the fish out of the water. If you can, calm, try to give the fish a swab. First choice of Mabroni, second choice of Methylene Blue, or third choice, not as preferred, a diluted, a 50% diluted 
potassium permanganate swab. Very important to make sure that that potassium permanganate does not go into the gills of the fish. If it does, then you're going to want to do a bath immediately of triple dose prime. Another option for a swab if you do not have methylene blue or potassium permanganate is 3% hydrogen peroxide. Follow the same guidelines. Make sure not to get into the gills. Part of this step three then after the swab is taking the fish from the swab and putting it into a medicated bath. This step right here is what has been shown to be what makes this treatment most successful. So you want to stick with it. Baths generally are for 7 to 10 days, 1 to 2 times a day for 30 minutes. After you do this regimen, then look at the fish's health, see if it's approved. If not, then you consider a different treatment. In this bath, you will have a double dose of either methylene blue or potassium permanganate. This is what's on the back of the bottle for the intake treatment at double dose in the bath. If you are using methylene blue and not potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate cannot be mixed with any other medications. Methylene blue, if you choose to, can be mixed with other sulfur medications to enhance the effectiveness for a more severe infection. Another effective drug to mix with methylene blue is Marisin Plus. Our actual number one choice to mix with methylene blue bath is spectrogram and if you do not have spectrogram canamycin with nitrofurazone combination you want to use both not just one or the other there's been proven a synergistic blend when using these two medications together spectrogram has these two mixed together step four last step guys is using an in tank treatment best is to be in a hospital tank in this in tank treatment you want to use a broad spectrum antibiotic like again the aforementioned spectrogram which is a canamycin nitrofurazone combination follow the instructions on how to perform that complete in tank treatment there's other treatment options and other recommendations in the article below just in case you don't have these on hand you might have something else these are the four proven steps where we've had best success treating colmenaris also a natural treatment to consider is using organ grape root as an addition to these other medications to enhance the effectiveness for more severe cases. This is a little more unknown science, but there has been some good results. And finally, not part of the steps, but should be considered in all treatments, is following up with an AAP medicated Wondershell, which has a broad spectrum, mild antibiotic medication combination. This is gonna be a slow release, medicated, shell that also releases those very important before mentioned electrolyte ion minerals. And side note, after the treatment is successful and ongoing with all your freshwater fish, you should be using a AAP Wander Shell ongoing to provide those ion minerals. Super important to keep all fish's immunity boosted long term for best long term health. Lastly, I'll go over the salt treatment method that I explained earlier in the video. This is if you only have sodium chloride on hand. And this has been something that's been proven because in the agricultural market, they can't just dump medication, you know, the food that we eat. They can't just dump medications in because of strict regulation guidelines. It has been proven that up to 2.54 teaspoon per gallon is a very effective treatment. And this has even been proven by University studies. This has also been proven to be an effective treatment for more salt known sensitive fish that gets anecdotally passed around on the internet. These fish can't handle sodium. But the Alabama Agricultural Experimental Station from the Auburn University showed that even fish like catfish can handle these in times of needing the treatment and then still they're known as more sensitive fish but if your fish is going to pass away from this disease versus a long-term effect of what could happen from the sodium uh, saving the fish is usually the preferred choice okay guys I hope that information was helpful this is what we've had best success with I really appreciate you guys I want you guys to know that I'm gonna ask that you please like subscribe share 
of course. And tune in next time. I'll talk to you then. Bye.